So good to be here this morning. I'm glad you're here. I want everyone to stand with me for just a minute, and, and we're just going to take a moment, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So everyone stand with me. We're going to pray. Let's just ask the Holy Spirit to move in our lives, our church service today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Father, we are grateful today for what you've done for us. In the midst of, Lord, our challenges and our battles and the things that we face, I find that you are faithful. You are faithful, and you're always there. I want to thank you, Lord, for strengthening us. I want to thank you for the faith of this house, those that have believed you and stood, and they've declared the Word of God, and they've seen the miracles working in our lives. And I pray that this morning that the Holy Spirit would do a wonderful work in this place. Heal every heart that needs healed. Restore those, Lord, that need to be restored. I pray that the Holy Spirit, Lord, would comfort and minister and strengthen every single heart. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Would you turn to somebody and tell them, say, I want you to know that I really, really, really do love you. Would you do that right now? Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shores. I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away when I die, hallelujah, by and by. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in, will the circle be unbroken? By and by, Lord, by and by, there's a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. Oh, will the circle be unbroken? By and by, Lord, by and by, there's a better in the sky, Lord, in the sky. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in. Then I'll fly away, oh, glory. I'll fly away. I love you, Lord, 
Oh, your mercy never failed me. And all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. have led me through the fire and in darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness With my life laid down, I surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after. With my life laid down, I surrender now, I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Cause all my life you have been faithful. All my So good with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing. if you've ever been in a place where you knew God was good you knew it deep deep down in your heart you knew it but your head sometimes overrides your heart I'm coming out of one of those places and I cannot tell you how wonderful it feels I know with everything that I've been through and I look around this room at how many people have suffered. Pastor Jerry was just telling me that. Our people are hurting everywhere. I didn't need him to tell me that, that's for sure. It's everywhere. Excuse me. I'm trying not to be nervous. And I'm listening to the Lord, and he just wants me to tell you this morning, as Pastor Jerry was telling me, that we need to just press in. He is the only one that's going to fix anything that's wrong in your life. Anything. And you may be in the darkest days like I was where just getting out of bed was hard. Just brushing my teeth is hard some days. He will bring you out of it. He may do it all at once and throw you right back into what you were, where you were before. 
Sometimes he works a little slower. With me, he works a little slower because I'm hard-headed. I think I can fix everything. He's good, and his goodness is running after each and every one of us. Let him catch you. Let him catch you. I promise, I promise it will set you free. It will change your life. Let's go back and sing that.
Everybody say praise Thank the Lord. You, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Just lift your hands to the Lord right now. Father, we are so grateful for the blood that has been applied to our life. We worship you and we thank you for what you have done in us today. Just say that to the Lord. Say, I love you, Lord, with all my heart. Come on, just say it to the Lord with all my heart. With all that is within me, I worship you, and I thank you for it. And everybody say amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated for just a couple of moments. You know, I just feel like the Lord in this service today has got something special planned for you, and for you, and for you, and, and even for you. And the Holy Spirit is setting this to do work in you today. I want you just to open your heart. I feel like the Lord's given me a word that is really applicable to this. A lot of questions that I've had in my mind that I want to just go to before the Lord with, that I want to talk to you about. But this is going to be a great day today. We are going to take a moment and celebrate our children. And uh, the, the children, they continue to have a, a, a top priority in our life. Your kids, I'll tell you what, I was looking at my grandkids the other day and I thought, what took you so long to get here? I'm just telling you, oh my goodness, how they change your heart and life. And I'm so thankful for our children's ministry that has really given themselves. Now we have an Old Testament and we have a New Testament. And I just want, I just, I would like for you to please describe what's going on. That doesn't mean I'm old. No, I'm only four months older than her. I'm just the law, the history, you know, the beginning, and she's salvation, grace, grace. grace and mercy, and Jesus. and Jesus. We're doing the books of the Bible, and we want to leave a lasting impression to the children. And so as we teach, we will be bringing out new things for them. One of the cool things we're doing is having the leadership come in one every Sunday, being one of the characters of the Bible. And today, 
Pastor Steve is going to be one of our first books of the Bible characters. So we're super excited for him. Pray for him. So if you're part of the leadership, please talk to me and let's get you scheduled because we really, really, really want to connect you with our kids and our kids to get to know you. So this is a time of service that we release our kids and we talk about the trivia questions that our children ask every service to ask y'all. Last week it was, oh my goodness, was why didn't Pharaoh die if he was the firstborn? How many of y'all ever wondered that? Does anybody have the answer? Why did, not, why did Pharaoh not die during the plagues when the firstborn died? And his son did. Ian? Okay, so the kids said it was because... God needed somebody to deliver. You know, God had that conversation with uh, Pharaoh, and Pharaoh was like, I ain't letting him go. So God wanted him to let him go. And I thought that was a great answer. Eh, he was not the firstborn because God's word is true. Right? Even if he had a beef with you, his word is still true. If it was the firstborn, Pharaoh would have died. Pharaoh's sister is the one that found Moses. There you go, the answer. The sister was the oldest. Correct. Okay. So today's trivia question is, what is the acronym B-I-B-L-E stand for? Talk to you about it next week. All right, kids. Come join me over here and let's get going. Now, to, we're going to, we like to participate in the missions offering. So if you, the children pass by you and you have some dollars, $20, $100, thousand dollars million i don't know that they make that but and they'll be glad to give it for you it's awesome i have a parent gave me money to give to the kids to give away there you go all right will y'all join me as they come and honor god in in worshiping and praying over them good morning we thank you, Lord, for each one of these children. We thank you for the privilege to come before you and to teach them and to hear your words even come out of their mouths that they've been taught through the years. We thank you for the seed that you're planting in their life that will grow until they're old and they can teach their kids and grandkids. And we just thank you for your hedge of protection around about them, the hand of protection upon them, the blood of Jesus over them, and keeping them safe, healthy, and strong throughout their days. In Jesus' name, amen. Love these kids. A new character every week. Who's going to play Rahab? That's what I want to know. <laughs> That's not funny. Doug, you can play Abraham. <laughs> you can do it. Yeah, you can do it. Well, <laughs> I wasn't quite going there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, love it, love it, love it. And these kids, I'll tell you what, they're going to have a great time. Please be praying for our children. I really feel like today we're, our nation, our community, our families are under attack in such an incredible way. And we need to be praying for our children that God would establish His word in their heart and that they would be blessed. Well, this morning, uh, let, me, let me do two things. First of all, is there anyone that is here for your very first time on a Sunday morning? 
Uh, Charlie normally does this, and he is not, he is not uh, in today. Uh, but uh, I, I do want to take just a moment. As if you're here for your very first time on a Sunday morning, would you just please slip your hand up so we can just acknowledge you and, and receive you? Anyone very first time on a Sunday morning? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Back here. Is this your first time? I'm so glad you came. That's for sure. I was, I was about to panic. We got nobody here for their first time on a Sunday morning. Thank you for coming. I'm so glad you're here. Make yourself at home today. Um, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's, uh, let's take a moment and let's bless the Lord with our giving today. We're going with our tithing, our offering. Uh, I, would you just close your eyes to me for just a moment? Father, you have blessed us beyond measure. You have made a way for us where it just didn't seem like there was a way to be made, but you made a way for us. You've proven yourself to be our provider, uh, our healer, our our source of restoration, our strength, our encouragement. And I'm just asking, Lord, today that you would show yourself strong in every person. Thank you, Lord, as we bring their tithing to declare your lordship in our life and to worship you with the first fruit of our increase. Thank you, Father, for blessing our families. I want you just to say this right now. Say, Lord, thank you for blessing my family. Thank you for making a way. Thank you for providing for me. You are the Lord, my God, and I thank you. Say this, say, you are Jehovah Jireh. That means he's our provider. You're Jehovah Jireh. You always make a way. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now listen, we have electronic giving in the back, those of you that want to do that. Uh, our ushers are going to come forward here, and those of you that want to, to uh, give... Uh, the other way, you can just you can bring it to the basket. If you need an envelope, please hold your hand up real high, and uh, they'll take care of it. Make sure that, that uh, we have all of our records together. We also have a phone app that you can give, and so we're just asking that everybody please be aware of that. Now listen, we've got our missions month. October has been, of course, this has been, I'm just telling you something. Things have been so upside down for the last 18 months or so. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to get ourselves back on track, but this is October has been our missions month. And we've been pushing always before for a dollar a day. And I think that's so important, maybe that you set aside yourself to say, I'm going to give to missions a dollar a day. Make that commitment. We've got a card that you can fill out, and I think it will, uh, I think it will help you as well as everyone else. So the rest of you, come on, let's just honor the Lord with our giving this morning. We want to just give thanks to the Lord for what he's done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you have always been so faithful and so good to us. And Father, as we bring our tithing and offering, and of course those that have done it electronically, it's the same thing as we all come together to lift up our increase to you and say thank you for being our God. Thank you for strengthening us. Thank you for making a way. Lord, you've been so, so good to us. Father, right now as their pastor, I declare the blessing over them. I declare blessing over their families, over their businesses. The devourer shall not come and devour. We declare in the name of the Lord Jesus strength and blessing. Let their faith be strong. Let their confession remain steadfast. And I pray, oh God, that you would bless them coming in and bless them going out. Bless them in the store. Bless them in the field. Bless them in all that they put their hands to. And we ask it in Jesus' precious name. And everybody say amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Aleph had just mentioned this course to do, and they didn't get a chance to do it. In the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, He's the Prince of Peace. Come on, sing this with me. Troubles vanish, hearts are mended in the presence of the King. Come on now, sing that with me one time. Slip your hands up to the Lord and just say, Lord, I love you. I love you, Lord. 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 You know, we must never lose what it means to be a worshiper. The Bible said that's what God seeks for, is those to worship him in spirit and in truth. The avenue to where you want to go is that of being a worshiper. Worshiping is just done with just yielding your heart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I need you, Lord. <laughs> I'm not kidding, Lord. I need you. <laughs> I need you, Lord. need you, Lord. Can you 
just say that to the Lord for just a moment. We'll go on with another part of the service in a moment, but I just feel like we just need to just say to the Lord, I, I need you. I, I just need you, Lord. sing that with me. Oh, I love him. I love him. I love him. He's the rose of Sharon to me. <laughs> I love I love him, I love him, and someday his face I shall see. Just sing this to the Lord. Sing, hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. Come on, I can see it on each face, and I know that it's the presence of the Lord. Let's see if I didn't get too high for this. Somebody say praise the Lord. Oh, come on. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I will bless the Lord at all times. The scripture said, his praise will continually be in my mouth. I've been so concerned over the last week or two. You know, I, I, I think I told you this last time I ministered um, about the thing that I saw in the spirit of a door being opened in the earth. I, I want to just reiterate that right quickly is the fact that it wasn't something I saw in the natural, but I saw it. I, it, it was like it was like a... It wasn't an open vision. Somehow in my spirit, I saw it. I saw a door in the earth open, and something very evil and very ugly came out of it. And I realized that there were things that were going to be maybe loosed on this earth that we've never seen before. Let me just tell you something. We are in a serious conflict and if we're, if we're not careful, we'll fall into a place of apathy to where we don't even realize we're in a war. <laughs> you know, it's just, there's just nothing worse than being in a fight and you're the one that don't realize you're in a fight. But that's how so many people are today. And the Lord gave me this as the fact that he wanted to bring restoration to our hearts 
in our lives. I believe that we're going to have a season of restoration. So I want to just give you the scripture as it came to me. Of course, a lot of you will know this scripture in Joel chapter 2 and verse 23. This is a prophecy concerning the things to come. It said, be glad, ye children of Zion, rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down on you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the same month. See, that's what God wants to do in your life. God wants to, God wants to give you an abundance. Now, how in the world can that happen? Because we serve the Lord God that made the heaven and earth. And God said, this is what I want to do for you. I, I don't want to just give you the rain, which the rain was simple, was uh, signifying the need that, of blessing for the, our crops and for our... I mean, there was just... The, drought was a horrible sign of death. But the rain was a sign of abundance. And, and God said, I'm, I'm going to give you an abundance of rain. I want to cause the things around you. I want to bring the blessing that causes your businesses to flourish, your families to flourish. Sometimes we need help. God's not going to do it for you. You still have to do the crop thing. You got to plant. You got to plant. But then once we plant, we got to harvest the thing that's been planted. We're waiting on the Lord to take care of it. He don't do it for you, but what he'll do is, is he'll bring the blessing in that will cause what you put your hands to to flourish. See, that's what God is wanting to do for you and your families. I'm, I'm, I'm troubled because I'm not hearing a lot of people talk about faith. There's not a lot of talk about Sometimes you just get hit in the mouth long enough, you get to where it just becomes survival mode. But I've been concerned that I haven't heard a lot of people talking about faith and about scriptures. They're just kind of parroting their circumstances. This is how things are going. It's bad. Yeah, you know, it was bad this week. Well, last week was terrible, but this week I'm not sure what's going to happen. You know, we get to where we, we talk about facts rather than we talk about truth. You know, the fact is, is that there's things going on, but the truth is, is that God is going to supply your needs according to his riches and glory. And I can look at something that is very factual. I'm not denying that it's not there, but the truth is, is this is what God has said about me. And I've been troubled that I haven't, I haven't heard enough people talking about making the declaration from the rooftops, this is who we are and this is what God's going to do for us. I don't care what I see. I don't care. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved by what God's word has said about me. And I know that his will, somebody say, what's his will? His will is, is that you prosper and be in health. It's his will to bring you the former and the latter rain in the same month. But what we do is, is through our faith, we embrace that. We cause the door to be opened into our life. Faith is the gate. It's the bridge from the world of the kingdom into the world of the natural. And we must not lose that. We must not. I know some of you have been through hardships. Some of you have been through such difficulties. But it's important that you not lose the confession of your faith, the declaration of who God is. That's pleasing to the Lord. It's pleasing to the Lord that when you literally stare death in the eye and you say, I want you to know that God is my redeemer. God is, there's something powerful and pleasing. The matter of fact, the Bible said in, in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, he said that without faith, it is impossible to please him. For, for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. See, we've, we've failed to be diligent in our seeking after the Lord. We become, it's almost like we become weary 
in well-doing. And I know what that is. There's sometimes you just have battle fatigue. <laughs> kind of like that fellow lay in the hospital bed and the preacher stand over him and say, renounce the devil. And he said, I'm not in any condition to antagonize anybody. <laughs> I, know, I know what that is. You're thinking, I just don't think I can give out another ounce of anything. But see, we must diligently seek the Lord and believe that he is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. But it's almost like the church, the world, the whole world has gone into a stupor. As I look at people, it's almost like their eyes are glazed over. And you get to where I'm just going through the motions. I, what day is this? What? Did, did we go through this already? I mean, really, it, it literally feels like something has been stolen from us. And so we settle back and we find ourselves in apathy. Well, I just don't even know that I'm going to go to church. <sighs> what good is it? What good is it? See, that was a question that was asked in the book of Malachi chapter, I believe, 3. When they said, what good is it to serve the Lord? What good is it to hold diligent to his word? Such a powerful word. People found themselves in such apathy to where weakness had overcome them. But it followed it up with said, but they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance shall be written for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And then he tagged it with, he said, and they shall be mine in that day, saith the Lord, when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serves him. I know that there's a tendency in people because of the weariness of the battle to lose heart and to just sit down. But there is something about us getting together and talking about the Lord. See, and the Bible said, and God hearkened, and he heard it. He heard it. The two on the road to Emmaus. You remember that when Jesus was crucified and had already risen from the dead? And the two on the road to Emmaus, it said they were communing one with another. And Jesus drew near to them. You know why he did that? Because he can't stay away. When people get together and talk about the Lord, you know who's going to show up? The Lord. And it said, the Lord walked with them. He fellowship. They didn't even realize what was going on. Many times you may not realize, but when you get together, the presence of the Lord is drawn to you. <laughs> and it said that he, oh, I love this because it said, when they got to the house that they were going to, it said he acted like he was going to go on further. That, that's how he does. You know that? He does. And it said they constrained him. When's the last time you constrained the Lord? Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't go. Please stay. They constrained him. And when that happened, it said they broke bread with him and he revealed himself to them. You want him to be revealed to you in a new and living way. You need to pursue him, talk about him, and constrain him. I need you, Lord. <laughs> I need you, Lord. And let me just tell you something. We need that. He wants to bring an abundance to you. He wants to bring fullness to you, no matter what you've been facing. And so he said there, and the floors, verse 24, shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. That's a message of abundance. But verse 25 is what caught my eye. And I thought, oh my goodness, this has happened. He said, I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten 
the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. I will restore the, the things that the locust and the caterpillar and the canker worm and the palmer worm has stolen from you. He said, I will restore. See, restoration is the message of today. That's what God wants to do in you. Restoring, that's not just something God did. Everything about God means restore. He even, you're even called to that ministry. Galatians 6.1 says, if you see your brother overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one. Do you know that? I, and I always thought about, he was being a little snarky there when he said, if you're really spiritual, restore. But you know what? I really believe there are some times when you're going through things, there are some times when you need restoration and you can't get it anyplace else. You need someone who is walking in the spirit to begin to break that thing for you. There are times, guys, when I can't, Help myself. I don't know how to fix me. I don't know how I don't know how to break out of the the stupor that I've been in. I don't know how to get out of that that daze that I've been walking in. I don't know how to do it. And we become so critical of one another because well, you need to just do this and you need sometimes they don't know how. And, and we need people who are truly spiritual, who carry the grace of God. This is a reason to have a prayer ministry in the church. Because you have people who get together and they pray together and they seek God together. See, those are the ones that sometimes you can't help yourself and you have to go and sit in a chair and say, pray for me, I'm, I'm stuck and I can't get out. Sometimes your battle isn't just emotional and mental. Sometimes your battle is spiritual. And you can't fix it. You can't take enough medication to break out of that. All you can do is go to the Lord and say, help me. Help me. And somebody who is spiritual that comes along and lays hands on you and they pray for you and they break that thing off of you. I don't care who you are. You, you come to a place where the only thing that can help you is the Spirit of God. I need the Spirit of God to touch me. I need the Spirit of God to break this yoke from off of my neck. Somehow I got yoked. Somehow I got burdened. Maybe it was because I got hurt. Maybe it was because I got disappointed. Maybe it was because I got fearful. But it became a yoke. It became a yoke to me. You know, I, I thought about that. It wasn't the big things. It wasn't great big demonic things that was devouring. It was insects, as bugs, little things, caterpillars, canker worms, parma worms, caterpillars. That cute little caterpillar going to turn into a butterfly. Oh, how sweet. Yeah, he's devouring your plant, whether you know it or not. little devil-possessed thing. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> the locusts, they'll take the root and the fruit. They'll take your present and your future. That's what the enemy does. The enemy tries to come in and he tries to take those things, when the, when the seed is sown and the plant begins to come up, the enemy will send little things. Sometimes it's not big things that devour your life. It's little things. 
words that are said by somebody, disappointments that you have, things that normally you might just blow off if that's all it was, but when you just get bombarded by 500 different things, it weighs a 1,000 pounds, and you can't break out of that. That's good. That is good. Things that consume your life, consume your time, that consume your focus, that consume your health, little things like that devouring the fruitfulness of your life and we get to the place my life isn't being fruitful my life is not being fruitful I'm living my life I'm doing my thing but I'm not fruitful I mean we need to ask ourselves that is my life being fruitful right now but there's something even more that I wanted to get to and that's where he said the years of our life you know we've been under attack let me tell you we have been under attack I just got back from a missions conference and people from all over the world and all over the United States they're all under attack there is something that has happened the church, of course, the church, all they're doing is nothing. <laughs> Half the time they don't believe in healing, they don't believe in deliverance, they don't believe in nothing. Famous for believing nothing. They get under attack, and all they can do is say bye bye. <laughs> but the attack has has been on us. The attack has been on me. I've gone. I've been under attack for the last year or so myself, just like you have. See, sometimes you can be anointed to preach it, but you're not anointed to live it. You got to face it like everybody else does. <laughs> That's a, that is the truth. So busy putting out fires, so busy trying to fix this, fix that. But there was something else. It feels like we lost something. It wasn't just the fact that we battle a sickness or we battle a loss or whatever. There was something that feels like we lost our time, our dreams, our attention, our passion, our zeal. That, that represents the years that the devourer has stolen from us. See, Satan's not trying to just make you sick. It isn't. It, it, he doesn't care. He, he he doesn't care whether you live or die as long as you stay out of his way. He doesn't rejoice. Oh my goodness, they caught the cold. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Can you see the devil doing that? <laughs> he doesn't care whether you get it. That that's not it. What he's trying to do is sideline you and make you ineffective in any way that he possibly can. If I can sideline them, if I can get them to where they're ineffective. They're apathetic. Good, Pastor. Good. And people are wounded today. Some of you are wounded. I know you are, and I'm so sorry. I know some of you have taken some hits. I know that some of you put on the face and, and you say, I'm going to pull it together. But I know you're struggling. I know you are. And all I can do for you is to produce the Word of God and stand with you and believe with you and tell you you are not alone. You're not going to be left alone. You will not be abandoned. We're going to stand with you and we're going to, if we have to drag you across the finish line, we're going to do what we have to do. But I've just been concerned that I haven't been hearing faith talking. 
no expectancy, no scriptures. That should be at the forefront of everything that we do. But they're under attack by so many different things. I was pulling up a thing here where it said that 90% of the problems in people stem from stress and worry. About what? Little things. Caterpillar, canker worm. May not kill you in 30 minutes, but it just eats away at the root system. It finds the fruit of your life and just begins to eat away at that thing. And the result is, is that we've lost years. I lost something. I, I lost something. What, what, what is it? It feels like I've lost something. We've lost. The enemy came in and what we lost was the years. You know, when the Bible said in the book of Malachi, it said whenever you tithe, it said, he will rebuke the devourer. <laughs> now, I've always just isolated that to Lucifer, and certainly he fits that category. But the things that he uses is those little things. The pest. Anybody got any pest? Now, please don't point at anyone. <laughs> but you just have a pest that just gnaws away at you. Discouragement. Depression. Anxiety. Fear. It just chews at you. Literally. It, it, it chews at your foundation until you feel like I don't even have anything to stand on. And you get to where you just kind of go into a coma. You're staring at things, but you don't see them. People are saying things to you, but you're not really hearing them. You're just kind of going through the motions. Those are the years of your life, your passion. You used to dream, now you don't dream. You used to have zeal. I had zeal, but suddenly now I can't find that zeal. The little things, the locust, the caterpillar, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the little thing. But I felt like what the Lord wanted me to say to you today. And I want you to please hear me. I believe that today God wants to bring restoration to you. I believe today, verse 25, where he says, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. God says, I'll destroy, I will restore to you. Restoration is what's coming to us. You remember 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way. What did he say? I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. This is a time. This is a time for us to take back what belongs to us. God's wanting to heal. You may say, I've been through it. God wants to restore you. God wants to restore you. You know, have you ever seen some furniture that was just broken down and old and gnarly? And you knew that one day that, that must have been something. But when you have a master craftsman come in and start to work, I was looking at some furniture the other day. Bobby, I thought about you the other day as I was thinking about that furniture. And I thought, you know, I remember, Bobby, he, you know, he's made cabinets. He's done this for so very long. He knows what's good, what's bad. And to have a master craftsman that can look at something and say, here's what it's supposed to look like. And they start to work on it. And they start to add the pieces that need to be, that need to be restored or need to be whatever. 
And when they finish with it, they step back and they look, and you always look at the work that they've done. You think, my God, that's beautiful. See, that's what God wants to do with you. Maybe you've lost something. Maybe you feel like, I used to have it, but I don't have it anymore. I want you to know that God wants to, to restore the years that the things that have deteriorated your life and have stolen from you, God wants to restore that for you today. And I believe this is the day he wants to do it. I'm not saying in six months or in two years. I believe today God wants to restore the years. He wants to restore your zeal and your heart and your passion and your dreams. You used to dream your vision. This is what we're going to do. This is See, that represents the years of your life. The things I hoped for, the things I prayed for. But no, I said, maybe, maybe, maybe not, maybe not. No, no, no. God wants to eliminate that. He wants to come in and restore you. And I just want you to let that happen right now. I want you to let it happen. This is a spiritual thing. It's not, and I believe in counseling. I, I do. I said this to you before, but I think every one of you in this place need a season of good counseling. <laughs> well, well, you do. Don't look at me like that. You know you do. But there are some things that are only broken through the Spirit. It's not just a change of attitude and of mind and and, and changing the disposition, which that's sometimes important. Sometimes people need to be told, don't do this anymore. Sometimes people need to be told that. But there are sometimes when, with that, when it's not necessarily you, but it's something spiritual that has gnawed away. And, and you know the craziest thing about these stupid insects? You don't, re unless you're there looking, you don't realize they're there until, what do I, how, do I, how do I know they're there? I notice something. There's holes in the leaves. How did that happen? When did that happen? See, that's how your life is. You're going along, you think everything is great, but suddenly you realize there's a hole in my life. Something's missing. See, the enemy just came in and he did it in the night. He did it when you weren't looking. He did it while you were asleep. That's what those devil-possessed armadillos do. <laughs> they watch your house until you turn off the lights. You wake up the next morning and think, my God, it's Beirut. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> he did it while I was asleep. Can I just tell you this? The things that hit your life most of the time are when you're caught asleep. Jesus told his disciples, because their eyes were so heavy in the garden, and Jesus said, couldn't you tarry with me for one hour? But they couldn't. They went right back to sleep again. And, of course, then the enemy came up and showed up. Then Peter jumps up with his sword. I'll get you now. Well, you should have been sleeping. Come on, guys. The Bible says, awake thou that sleepest. Awake. You need help? We'll help you. We've got people here who are spiritual that will lay hands on you and they'll break you out of that thing They'll break, they, will, they will break that stupor off of your life and you'll find yourself suddenly moving into an area of fruitfulness that you thought maybe you would never have again. God wants to not only deliver you from the canker worm and the caterpillar and the others, but he wants to restore the years. He wants to restore the years, the passion. That's what he wants to restore. So I just want you right now to close your eyes with me for a moment. And we're going to pray.
Sister Faye, uh, in a couple of moments, we're going to have a word of prayer. We're going to do just a little bit of business here. But in a moment, I'm a, I want the prayer ministry that works with you. And I'm looking for the rest of our guys, but I think he's out of town. John, where are you? There you are. I'm looking back here. What are you sitting up there for? John, I think this is important that we have a couple of moments that people who feel like they've been through things, and it doesn't, listen, it doesn't take all day. Sometimes it's just speaking the word over them, laying hands on them. I want you guys to get ready in a couple of moments. I want you to, to come up in a moment. And, and those of you that are going through things and you say, I, I can't break through this seeming wall that's hit me and I need I just I just need someone that is spiritual to speak a word over my life and break that thing we have a war room so I was looking over here and they mean business when they mean war amen well, we're going to pray in just a moment I, I want to say that there are some families in our church that we need to be specifically prayerful, prayerful for. This young lady just lost her mom this week. It doesn't get harder than that. It just doesn't. But I want you to know we're standing with you. We're, we're standing with you. Some of you that have been facing sicknesses and things that you don't know, I want you to know that we're supporting you and what's going on. Angie, why don't you come up here and, and talk with me concerning Matt. I, I want to I do, do this before you come on up, if you wouldn't mind. As we're um, reaching out and, and praying specifically for different families and things that we're going through, one thing I want to remind, Rhonda Smith is in California this morning. Her mom is is really sick and we need to keep her in our prayers. But one thing we're going to do this morning besides pray is we're going to do something practical that we can do to help someone. Um, Larry and Carol right here, everybody knows the Fainers, whether you know them from Family Worship Center or this community, they have been on every, they're everywhere. They're, they're in the school, they're in the fire department, they're everywhere and, and their kids have followed along suit with them too. And their son, Matt, uh, Matt is um, going through a really hard health challenge right now. He's very sick. And um, he's a coach and a teacher at Elgin High School. But him and his wife are really facing something difficult. And he's, he's not been able to work. And she's been with him. And she's not been able to work. They're doing a fundraiser for, the, for them. Um, these shirts right here. If you want to purchase a shirt, um, it's, the link is going to be on the, the church's website and on our Facebook page. But, you know, only a portion of that goes to them, right? If there's, so this morning, we're going to stop what we're doing right now, and we're going to take an offering for Matt and Kim to bless them and to help them through this season of very difficult, not just a health challenge, but just their whole life. I mean, imagine maybe some of you have faced that before, but... You're rocking along one day and you got two incomes and you're living and doing all the things. And then in a day that changes and we'd all be in a really, really, really rough situation. So we want to take an opportunity now. We're going to take five minutes. I know this is real unusual to do it like this, but I'm going to ask everyone to, even if you can only contribute a dollar, I want you to give something towards this family who's... Give, yes, obviously, I, I know most of us can do more than that, but I would like for everybody to do something if you can. To go, um, This will go directly to Matt and Kim to just help cover some of their, all the expenses. And if you are interested in ordering a shirt, like I said, you can do that. There's online giving at the back. They're going to bring an offering basket up here. And um, yes, 
well, and then it'll come to the church and the church will just issue the funds directly to them. So we want you to be generous. I want you to be generous. Uh, like Angie said, when, when suddenly he is in the hospital and she's having to be there with him, they need some help. And I think that we are generous enough that we can, yes, we, we are praying for them, but we want, we want to have a practical application right now, and we want to be a blessing. So would you just close your eyes with me and just say, Father, I have an opportunity to be a blessing to somebody who's really going through a challenge today. I'm just asking you to show me what to do. Just show me what to do. And then, and the Lord will just, well, he'll just drop it in your heart just like that. And just be obedient. That's, <laughs> that is literally all that it takes is just to hear the voice of the Lord and just be obedient. And let's be a blessing. Now, the, the Bible says, he that giveth to the poor lendeth to the Lord. That means when you give to somebody else that can't help themselves, you're not just, you're not just doing this for them. God's involved in that. So I'm just going to ask you to please come and let's, Let's be a blessing. Let's let's show let's just show some some of the love of the Lord toward their life. Those of you that are going to be ordering a shirt, that has to be done today. Okay, today. And at the very latest, by 11.59, that's the cutoff, to, by midnight. So we need, we need that. And plus, I think it would be good uh, for those of you that see them. Larry and Carol, they just need somebody to hug them for a little bit. And so we want to have a little bit of time just to love on them encourage them. Dear ones, I want to say thank you for being such a gracious and generous family. Now listen to me. If you are in need today and you say, I just feel like I've hit a wall and I can't seem to get by it, I want you to come and stand up here with me for just a moment. Is there anyone in this place who says, I just feel like I've gone through some things and, and I, 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 don't, I don't know about you, I've been there. I've been there, I think I've been there for about a year. I and what was so crazy is I didn't even realize I knew something was wrong, but I couldn't, I couldn't fix it. I didn't know how to fix it. And sometimes you just need someone just to lay hands on you and, and, and break that. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you've been in the ministry for 100 years. There comes a time when you face things that you don't know how to fix yourself. You do not know. Thank you, Lord. 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 Is there anyone else that just feels like this is, we're just going to take a couple of moments for this. We just want everybody that's in this place. I'm going to ask, John, I'd like for the prayer ministry just to come and stand in front. War room guys, please come stand in front and, and just come through. And I just want you to lay hands on people. Come on, if you wouldn't mind, just get in front of these people and lay hands on them. And I just want you to speak over their life. Ye which are spiritual, the Bible said, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Approach their needs. Approach what they're going through with, you, with, with a sense of authority and of strength. I just want you to declare that over them in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus.
Just receive right now. It's happening. It's happening. Never the 
the Bible says, is there any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint them with oil. I've got some oil right here. It said the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. <laughs> oh. him up, I pray. Strengthen him. I speak healing and wholeness to his body. From the crown of his head right now from the soul.
Thank you, Lord. 